Hi there, it's Luke here again and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. It's been a while since we've done one of these but we're back again for a new product introduction video. So there's quite a few new products to catch up on. Probably one of the ones that you're most excited about is the M5 Paper. The M5 Paper is a new core with a capacitive touch e-ink display. It is using the IT8951 display with the GT911 capacitive touch sensor. So let's have a look at it. The screen itself is 4.7 inches and has the capacity to display 16 levels of grayscale. Now the touch screen is really quite accurate. We can have a look up close here with camera. Okay, let's have a quick look here at the M5 paper interface. We've got a very nice demo program here. And let's see, the touch screen is pretty responsive. So in this test program here, we can see the temperature and humidity from the inbuilt SHT30 sensor. We can see the current time and date and the uh, Wi-Fi settings over here. Battery um, voltage also shows up on there and you can see I haven't in inserted an SD card or pressed the button so I don't have any info there. Well, if we return to the main menu we have also here the settings. We can set a wallpaper, uh, change the language, restart and shut down. We have a keyboard here for testing typing. We can set up our wireless networks here in the WLAN option. Storage here, if I had an SD inserted, you could see the contents of the SD card. Here, um, there's a nice little test um, of different settings. And you can see down here the refresh rate. And also there's uh, Conway's Game of Life, um, just for a little display show off there. And there's also this nice demo of what a IoT display might look like. So we could set that on our fridge or on a wall in our house and then configure it to use other M5 stack devices to turn on our aircon uh, lights and so on. A few of the other features, it has this little um, navigation wheel here two-way and pressing button. Uh, it has an SD card slot for expanded storage. And then if we look on the back, you can also see it has three different expansion ports, the typical A, B, and C ports that we see on most core devices. And the, it also has an RTC, which is the BM8563. So if you want to set the time on there. So we'll be back a little bit later with some of the current projects that people have been working on for this device. But first, let's have a look at some of the other specs for this device. Okay, moving on now, we have a bunch of new modules for the main core devices, specifically the Core 2. Uh, first off, we have this um, Servo 2 module which is an updated version of the servo module for the core device. This one has been designed specifically for the core 2. It has uh, 16 servo channels uh, and that's using the PCA9685 chip to control those. It can accept 6 to 12 volts and what's special about this that wasn't uh, quite possible without a little modification at least with the previous servo module is it contains a dip switch. This dip switch is used to set the ITC address of the device. Therefore meaning that we can stack multiple Servo 2 modules for if you want to control a lot of servos. So let's have a quick look at some of the other specifications of this device. Great, and on to another one of these modules, the Go Plus 2. So the Go Plus 2 is uh, also an updated version of the previous Go Plus module with some extra features. 
This one is also designed specifically for the Core 2, uh, which is mainly for driving DC motors, of which it can control two, and also servo motors, which it control four. So it has a built-in 500 milliamp hour battery. Uh, it also has uh, an infrared transmitter and receiver, um, three analog and digital output and input ports and uh, it is controlling all of this with uh, an STM32 chip that's built in. So this could be great for some small robots which you don't need a lot of servos for and perhaps only one or two DC motors. Um, and let's have a look at some of the other features of this device. Okay, next up, let's check out the M5 Go to Bottom. So this is a similar base as the Go or Fire, but this is specifically for the Core 2 model. So it has most of the same features that those bottoms would also have. The um, array of five RGB LEDs on each side, and this uh, Lego style bottom, which is great for integrating your Technics LEGO projects. It has the B and C ports uh, for UART and digital analog input and output. The MPU6886 uh, accelerometer and gyro sensor. And also included in this, which is not in the previous models, is a SPM1423 uh, microphone has a typical 500 milliamp battery that all the other devices has. And here are a few of the other features of the M5 Go 2 bottom. Okay, now for the last module in this set of modules that we're introducing. This is the ECG module, uh, which stands for electrocardiogram. So this is for tracking your heart, specifically for getting the pulse rate or electrical activity of the heart. Uh, it's using an STM32 chip um, and a bunch of other chips for filtering and processing and cancelling out a lot of the electrical noise so that we can get an accurate reading. In the kit you will receive uh, six of these uh, sticky pads which attach to the three electrodes there. So this could be used for like a pocket ECG uh, for monitoring health, that sort of thing, and so on. And here are some of the other specifications of this device. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the new units in the unit series. First up, we have this relay unit. So it provides four separate relays, which each have their own LED status indicator. This can accept a maximum of 250 volts and outputs 10 amps. And so you can use this then to control some of your household appliances, such as lamps or fans, etc., or other high voltage um, electronics. Onto the other units we have here, and there is the mic unit. So this is using a different mic to most of the ones that are built in the course. This is a much higher quality mic. It's an omnidirectional electric mic, which is using a preamp, which is the MAX 4466. And it also has a chip in here with the LM393, which is an adjustable voltage comparator. So there's a small, um, pot on there where you can adjust to filter out noise. So this could be used for processing sound in your projects and making simple recordings. Let's have a look at the last unit in this set of units. Something that's been requested for quite a while now. Um, this is an ultrasonic unit used in a whole bunch of Arduino projects. Uh, for range sensing uh, in robots or even uh, simple distance sensing projects. 
So now we have this ultrasonic unit. Uh, it is accurate down to one millimeter and has an effective distance of 20 to 1,500 millimeters. And it operates around the 40 kilohertz band. So uh, the chip that it's using in here is the RCWL 9600. And like I said, this is perfect for using in those simple range finding robots or um, distance sensors. Uh, we can have a look at some of the uh, projects that we can use with this in a later video. And that's it for the sensors, uh, the new units we have in this video. And lastly, we have some cameras to show off. So. There's not much difference between these two cameras. We'll take a quick look. This is the timer camera and this is the timer camera X. They're both using the OV3660 camera, which uh, is capable of 3 million pixels and producing images at a max resolution of 1600 by 1200. So the main difference between these cameras is the Timer Camera X comes in a nice case and also includes the typical uh, Lego adapters that we've seen in most of the cameras and also includes a 140 milliamp hour battery inside. So if you want this camera to sort of stay independent of a power source, uh, this has been engineered for lower power applications. Then you could go for the Timer Camera X if you want something a bit cheaper and something you're going to have tethered most of the time, you could go for the timer camera, which is uh, without the battery and does not come in a case. Another feature that both of these cameras have is the built-in RTC, which is the BM8563. And these have also been designed so that they can work well with UI flow. Um, and we'll have a look at that in a future video also. So that's it for our quick introduction of all the products. Let's now take a look at some of the cool projects that you've been working on for those that have already got these new products in their hands. Let's take a look. First off, let's have a look at the M5 paper. On receiving the product, you might want to check out the sample programs that you can find in the M5 burner. Now let's have a look at some of the projects that our users have made. Typically, as you would imagine, people have made some e-readers and you can find the code for these. Also some projects which would suit the office and home such as this calendar and weather display and this project which allows you to show graphs in a nice layout. There's also this cool visual novel engine which allows you to view the popular Japanese interactive fiction. Also well-known M5 stack user Lovian has updated his Lovian graphics library now to support the M5 paper. And finally this cool weather display even includes a nice 3D printed holder. Check out the description for all the links to the githubs of these projects. I scoured the internet looking for other projects on the other products that we introduced in this video but I was only able to find this other review on the timer camera which also gives a nice little tutorial on a smart doorbell. So you can go and check that out on Neon Airship's channel. Okay guys, that's about all we have time for in today's video. If you have any questions whatsoever about these new products, make sure to leave a comment about that down in the comment section. And now I'd like to also introduce our Christmas competition. So we have a competition for festive themed M5 stack projects which we'd like you to submit uh, this link and I'll also leave the link down below in the description you can be in the chance of winning a whole bunch of M5 stack goodies and the winner will be announced in mid-January so make sure to apply to that competition and I wish you luck and uh, that's all for me today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!